play, it is you are going to throw a bottleneck vase. It is basically the basic form. So lots of water. doing is I'm taking my thumb and I'm sweeping that the first joint. I'm not using any pressure on this hand. This hand is nothing more than a tool. And I sweep it open so I have a nice opening. And then because it's more than a pound and a half of clay, I actually do a little extra opening on my side, my hand holding the outside and kind of pushing it in and the, my dominant hand bringing that clay up and keeping it centered so I already have that volcano look to my opening which is good. Get the water out of the center, add a little to the walls, do my first pull and you notice I did open, I did center in a wide, a wide base. I want the base to be wide so I don't have to, when I'm doing the forming of my pumpkin, I don't have to do much. I'm going to do a lot of collaring though because I want to keep that rim collared in. So I want the rim to be collared in after every time before I even set my rim. Add a little water to the sides. Do my second pull. And I'm pulling up and in. So the shaping is actually already happening with it just because I'm doing that collaring after each pull. And I'm just making it so my hand can fit into the inside of that pot. By the third pull, I'm using much less water. Just getting it so that it drips down the sides. Get that. And I'm slowing down because my clay is bigger. It's getting taller. Get it in there. And so I've got my three poles. I've got the height I want. And now I'm going to come in and collar. You don't need a lot on the top for it, but just that collaring actually pushes that clay out. So I'm just kind of bringing that clay back in a little bit. Add a little water when the clay gets sticky. And then when I get to that neck, because I've done that collaring, I'm only pulling at that neck getting that thinned out a little bit and getting that bottleneck checking to see no, I don't have enough water in there to worry about so I'm going to collar that in at this point you could collar it totally in I'm not going to because I said this was the easy way so I'm going to leave it go collar that neck up and 
The nice thing about this is you don't have to have your top level. So even if it has a little bit of a wonky feel to it, it's okay. Get just a little more height to that. shaping that shape for the pumpkin trim trim off all the excess down at the bottom so it gets a nice round now when you're trimming off your skirt at least that's what I call it the skirt the piece that holds the pot up from here down you go where you want to start trimming and then move that blade down and in a little bit at the bottom. You get off all that extra weight that really helped on the pulling but won't help on the selling end. take care of the, of the stem. That neck is going to become the stem of my piece. Wash my hands off a little bit so it's not too slippery. And all I do is I just go four fingers and I start pushing that neck in. And it becomes a closed, a closed pot, and I have my stem. And once I have my stem closed up, before I start maneuvering it around anywhere, I'm going to come down and do the veins on the pumpkin. And I actually like using the wooden rib. And I use the round side because it has a nice rocking motion. So I find my pins and I line my pins up just because I am a, I have a visible, I like visible references. If your back's really messy, just put your lines in on the back, that's your reference points. I stick the rib down at the base and I rock it up to the top. And you don't have to worry about collapsing your pot because with us closing in that nick, all that air inside acts like a finger. So it's going to keep that pressure and keep that. And these are just reference points for me for when I finish up the veining. So I do it in quarters, then I half the quarters into eighths. And I find if I use the wooden knife to do this, I cut through my clay, but I don't when I'm using the wooden rib. That's why I use the wooden rib. Now that I've got my marks and it's starting to have those indentations, but you notice those have deeper indentations than that, what I'm doing is I take my fingers and I'm pushing in on the sides of those sections and I just work my way around the pumpkin. I haven't cut the pumpkin off the bat yet because that's helping hold things together. So I can use quite a bit of pressure because there's lots of air inside. Make those sections.
Now when it's when I'm done with this, I'm going to let it sit and dry for, uh, you know, if you've got time, let it sit and dry for about a half hour, 45 minutes out in the sunshine. And then you can come back to it when it's at more of a leather hard stage so that you can actually work the sections over a little bit more. But even if you just leave it at this point and say good enough, it's a nice looking pumpkin. What I do now is I take my needle tool and I poke it right there to let some of the air out. And pumpkins don't stand up, squash stand up. Pumpkins have kind of a concave top. That's why I poked that hole in there. Now I'm going to go back in and if I can find that hole and plug it up. And I've got that and now I'm going to position that stem. And I'm just going to work that stem to where it'll twist around because the vines on pumpkins twist around. If you think I've worked too long with pumpkins, you're right. Used to pick them out of, out of the garden patches. So I got to study on them. But you twist that around. You can make it even hook around a little bit if it's tall enough. And you've got a basic pumpkin. Cut it off and put it on the wear bath. And that's all it is. That's all it takes to make a pumpkin. Mm -hmm.